start recording and a uh, test of one. Oh, wait. Okay, yeah, second time I've done this now. Put the microphone in front of me. You think I learned this from the last time? <laughs> I are smart. Kidneys. <laughs> podcast for episode 39 for october 3rd 2016 uh thank you uh this is brought to you by the patreons thank you for our patrons at patreon who uh donate and make this possible and um and today we have myself kirok and uh warp jester with you hello again everybody <laughs> hello everybody uh and next the news <laughs> So uh, this past week, a big event took place, MineCon, and uh, MineCon. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold up, hold up. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, I, I got back up here. Just, just so people are confused. Okay. We don't have a main segment tonight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's, I, I just, I, I, I want to get a second to actually a disclaimer here because I apologize in advance. The, this, this week has been all Key Rock, like lining up news and everything else because I've been like so busy but yeah so we're just gonna do a news run tonight because there is a lot of news going on yeah. so we're it's just crazy. gonna do a news rundown so just so you guys know no main topic <laughs> just straight up news sorry straight up news. nah it's all good <laughs> uh yeah so minecon happened uh we have actually one beer jeer uh who went and attended it was uh ruark if i'm not mistaken mm -hmm. and they made a bunch of different announcements and things like that the ones i want to touch upon is basically minecraft for consoles minecraft for consoles are going to be getting a big update on <laughs> i can't see what you're doing <laughs> i know you i'm doing? sorry nothing. <laughs> nothing i'm just saying uh, i heard it but i couldn't <laughs> see it so uh so on october 4th they're going to be getting a big update it's the chinese mythology mashup um basically uh it'll be uh seven new building blocks some ter new terrain generation uh, fossils are buried underground, polar bears, snowy biomes, banners, things like that. Uh, some of those okay. things we already have in the computer version, and this is, you know, coming out over onto the... Uh, oh, that's right, because uh, Minecraft 10 has the polar bears and the fossil blocks. As far as I know, and banners already exist in the computer version, right? What isn't clear is the article, uh, if you check out the article in the show notes, does say that the free update comes out on October 4th. And then further down in the article, they say the Chinese mythology mashup pack for $4.99 adds 41 new skins plus uh, other things as well. So I, I don't know if it's free. I, I don't know. It's, it's kind of contradictory. For, for, for a small fee, it's free. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, no, this, I, this is actually yeah. kind of cool because it, it's – I, I'm a little lost on the Chinese mythology aspect of it. I, I haven't looked at the details because I don't do consoles, so whatever. But <laughs> um, but I know that console version of Minecraft has been catching up to what's available in PC. And I, I haven't done a, a, a line item list to see where it's at in terms of catching up in that regard. But I don't recall anything Chinese mythology in, in the PC version. That's true, actually, so now I, that you I, mentioned it curious about what all is there and and, and uh it'd be interesting to see i do have it on xbox so i can uh well i'll be curious I, i'm kind of wondering if we're gonna get to a point where um the two rows diverge or if they're gonna try to keep everything very very much the same so well who knows? i think the idea was that they were gonna make it so that it's one playable game across all systems but i that was I, my I, hope i don't I, know how to work microsoft said they're gonna do that you know buy it once play it anywhere yeah exactly so uh, it's supposed to be out on the Xbox One and Wii U from what I can gather. So, so hey, if you um, have an Xbox, <laughs> you can actually play that when it comes out or the upgrade to Minecraft. Or you can play some more classic games. Uh, <laughs> very classic. <laughs> very classic games. So um, because of the Play Anywhere feature that Microsoft is implementing in Windows 10, 
uh, universal, it's actually, I think called Win universal windows platform. Yes. Uh, that has allowed, um, uh, an emulator to make its way onto the Xbox one. So it's kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> you, you can, you can use the emulator. The emulator is called W64 E10. Uh, and mm. it's available on the name. Windows Store. Yeah, it's, I think it's uh, <laughs> 10 bucks. Uh, but if you fancy playing things like Mario or any kind of games like that, in fact, I think they were saying that uh, one of them is uh, Super Mario 64 plays very well on the Xbox One through the use of this emulator. That was emulator. a good one, too. I actually enjoyed that one. I've, I've never played any of the Mario games. What I've the never hell, played, man? I've, Never played any of the Mario. Forgive him, guys. He's Canadian. <laughs> Mario just doesn't come come far this far north. It's yeah. just not the season. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe it's not cold weather. You know, pipes freeze, and yeah, you know, who wants to deal with that? <laughs> <laughs> no, th th this is this is actually kind of kind of funny because there's actually another emulator that tried to make its way on and ended up getting kicked. And the the biggest substantiating difference between the two is this one, like any proper emulator will allow you to play of course legally backed up emulated games exactly whereas the other one basically the link to a bunch of sites where you get emulators yeah. um Although or if you still get games for the about, emulator there's still talk about them possibly yanking this from the microsoft store i i think so. it's gonna really come down to just how much grief nintendo wants to give them yeah, to be, to be honest yeah. with you, Makes and that's sense, that's yeah. gonna be interesting. I, I'm not. I'm, I'm actually kind of curious to see what happens in this, just because of the fact that Nintendo has been so brutal with DMCA. We talked about the 500 some odd DMC takedowns. Yes. Um, we have gotten hit multiple times for playing any sort of gameplay video um, in our news podcast. By every right, by law, we have every right to do so. But the automatic flagging kicks in, and it isn't just the fact that it's automatic flagging. We push back and say, uh, "No, this is this is fair use. We're a news podcast." Mm -hmm. And Nintendo actually rebuttals and says, "You know, you can't do this." And at that point, either we drop it or we go to court. And that's right. that's, that's not something that I have the lawyers to do. So we'll see. Yeah. I mean, maybe maybe Nintendo will think wiser than to pick on Microsoft since it's not just individuals like us, and they can't just beat us down. Yeah. Well, we'll see how this plays out. It's actually quite, quite interesting. Uh, if you have a Microsoft OneDrive, you can actually have ROMs on there and access them through your Xbox One and play them, which, which, is, awesome. Is, which is awesome. Yeah, exactly. I, I remember that the first emulator I ever came across was the uh, an emulator from my, on my friend's Windows 98. I think it was 98 or Windows XP machine. But it, it was called Ness, uh, uh, Ness Sack. It was a little pair of balls. <laughs> that, that's the icon of furry pair of balls. Anyways, <laughs> hey, speaking of furry balls, if you're a biker, you're gonna love GTA Online. <laughs> oh, yeah, <yes>. Segway. Uh, <laughs> you know, get those ones that hang right under your truck. Oh kit. God, yeah, you know. <laughs> I should get them from a Jeep. Just, just, no, to, just. It's a lot of topic. <laughs> Do you get one like little furry earmuffs on it for Canada? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Anyways, guy, I... <laughs> tell me about the bike. <laughs> so, um, GTA GTA Online is a popular game. I actually, I have seriously considered buying this game just because the physics is always really fun. When it works great, it works great, and when it doesn't work great, it's freaking hilarious. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so they're gonna they're gonna have uh the biker gangs uh edition or um. Like an update. Uh, yeah, basically an update rolling out here. It's gonna be October. What is it? October, October 4th. fourth. Uh, so tomorrow from from the release of this podcast. Yeah. Um, so you'll be able to pick that up, and it's gonna have uh, the ability to start with an uh, eight person motor, motor club and a lot of other fair weather stuff. Again, if you want to see the full details, you guys can roll over to uh, the BRG uh, show notes and uh, check the link out and head over there. I, I've seen a lot of people have a lot of fun running around on motorcycles along with everything else in this game. So I figured uh, this is going to be interesting. Yeah, with the motorcycles are fun. Like, just playing them are fun. But this adds a whole new level now because you can just – you could make a little posse, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and just And get picked uh, up by the cops that much yeah, quicker. <laughs> they, they, they'll have competitive and co-op modes. So it'll be fun to see how that works out. Awesome. Well, I wonder if it's rolling out uh, on the 4th. Yeah, so I have it for Xbox One. Let's see, see how that goes. 
That's a continuation of a of a really interesting game. The the um the other thing uh, that's really really cool is um people saw a tweet go out um of images for a teased game and this game was teased or announced sorry officially announced back in 2008 uh and since 2008 it's been very tight-lipped and they teased the photo out once and i remember seeing it and they teased another photo out recently like a couple days ago and the game is beyond good and evil 2 Ooh. Dude, have you played good beyond good and evil i have not Okay, and I kind of feel a little remiss about it. Uh, they they released HD versions for both the PS4 and the Xbox One. I don't think they had it for PC though, and I know you're not uh, a big reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't play but, it. <laughs> uh, it was an amazing game back in the day. It was kind of like that sleeper hit. Uh, people were telling me, "Yeah, you should play it. It's great." I played it, and I just fell in love. Uh, it has some great puzzle elements to it. Great characters. A really, really quirky storyline, but you got into I, it really quick. I, I love the pig. Oh, the pig is awesome. The pig is awesome. I, you know what? I can't remember his name now. <laughs> ah, jeez. It's been a while. I played it I played it back on the original Xbox of Fight. Was it Xbox or Xbox 360? I think it was Xbox. I have it upstairs. <laughs> yeah. So it's a sequel. It's a sequel to the cult classic. Uh, you know, UBI, uh, people have been wondering since they've been very tight-lipped about it whether or not they're going to be actually releasing this game. It's following suit with a bunch of other games out there that are like... Um, Crap, this is what, eight years in the making? Yeah, eight years in the making. What was the other game there that's coming out for PS4? Uh, the one with Bird Dog. Oh, yeah, I forget the name of it. But yeah, that that one... That one... <laughs> It's 10 years. 10 years like, in the making, and apparently the, the graphics and the gameplay are about 10 years behind. But anyways. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> it kind of worries me a little bit since this has been in development for so long. Yeah. Basically seeing a couple of uh, – one one console cycle, I believe. But, I, you know, I still have faith. The game was great. I think they'll still make it great. Um, I can't wait. If you look at – if you go into the show notes, there is a link that shows the actual image that they tweeted out to to tease, to tease the folk, yeah, it's really cool. I've never seen that. Well, if that if that game, uh, whether whether it's good or bad, have hope because at least we do have some games that are gonna be obviously awesome. Yeah, like Roach vs. Human Cockroach Simulator. <laughs> <laughs> I I love this too because it's the quote. Have you ever wanted to be a cockroach? Not someone who's <laughs> yeah, who's a bird and Yeah. Versus... <laughs> <laughs> a person nuisance, but the bugs that hang out and <laughs> God, it's basically I, I a cockroach simulator. <laughs> it is, it's cockroach simulator. Yeah. And it, 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 it'd be very clear, it literally is. You can play either as a human trying to kill the cockroaches or as a cockroach trying to so run. Imagine how much fun this thing would be <laughs> if you if you have an open co uh, line of communication, wh whatever, you know, headsets Dear and talk. God, why has this not <laughs> been like created in Gmod already? <laughs> I mean, oh, seriously. Yeah. What this, this this as soon as I saw this, like, is, is this actually a game or is this another like an adaptation of Gmod? I mean, honestly. So yeah, I, I you would you would I I would speculate with highest certainty that this is going to be multiplayer because there's nothing better than having your friends scatter like cockroaches, literally. <laughs> <laughs> while you're right, 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 right. Uh <laughs> I saw the image. Uh, the 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 game looks a little cartoony, kind of like uh, almost like a claymation or something like that. But uh, it looks good. Uh, yeah. It looks fun. It looks fun. It looks a lot of fun. I mean, they, they just say the Steam players have pointed out some potentially game breaking issues, like missing multiplayer options, lobby uh, wonkies, and so on. Uh, so we'll see how it turns out. But you know, it, I'm I'm just gonna assume that this is like all games nowadays where. You know, beta is the new release, so I'm sure there'll be some quirks right, to true. it. But yeah, I this is this is a game I could definitely say I could get behind <laughs> or under my shoe or under <laughs> behind behind the couch. Yes. Um. But yeah. Uh, but you know, new games, new stuff. I love it. Um. So, uh, backtracking, not backtracking, but UB Ubisoft, who is responsible for Beyond Good and Evil, uh, had a shareholders meeting this. I think it was this past week, a few days back. Mm -hmm. And um, this has been rumbling in the news a little bit recently where uh, a major conglomerate by the name of Vivendi, which I think is a French 
actually, uh, they're all French. They're all French. Oh yeah. Well, well that the makes the, sense. the 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 owners Ubisoft of Montreal. Ubisoft are French. Yeah. Vindy is French. Yeah. There you and go. Then, and and just so you guys, if, if you guys remember from a, quite a few podcasts ago, we actually talked about this because Vivendi actually got controlling stake in Ubisoft's mobile uh, 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 game division. loft. Game loft. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I've played I've played a few of those game loft games, and they're actually good, and you could tell the quality's there. Yep. And uh, so Vivendi in this meeting was expected to hostily take over, but it didn't happen. So it's good news for people who are fans of UB uh, plus their IPs. Um, So I'm very happy because that means Beyond Good and Evil 2 is probably safe. (laughs) And they're still working on it. But uh, yeah. I'd be curious. I, I I haven't looked into Vivendi to see what their history is like. And usually one of two things happen. We, we got this big corporation trying to gobble up all these other companies. Um, it worries me only because, <laughs> at least in my experience in history through all kinds of, of businesses, it seems like when you've got this one big juggernaut that starts sucking up all the little guys, the quality of those little guys starts to go downhill. The, mm. the big, the, especially in the game, just talk specifically about the gaming world, when I've seen big corporations take on stuff, they are there's a lot more of, of the bean counters involved in these damn games than the creators and the developers. And you get things like, you know, EA quality, basically. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah. And and I I, I I don't know what Vivendi's track record is, <laughs> um, but I'm I'm really hoping that they back the hell off because I just don't want to see that happen to other good game titles. And I know Ubisoft's had a good, good number yeah. of them. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting because, I mean, they're not out of the woods. Even though they haven't done anything at this point in time, it doesn't mean it can't happen, right? Yeah, the, apparently the, the end of the board meeting ended with actual clapping and cheering. <laughs> so I'm going to guess that's not typical of, of board meetings personally. But, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it was definitely, I'm, I'm sure, a very tense meeting. But oh, yeah. like you said, they're not out of the woods yet. Um, I think Vivendi has like a 20% stake in Ubisoft now. Yeah, so um, they, are, they are a big, uh, big holder. Yeah, so uh, we'll see where it goes. And, you know, hopefully they'll get sucked up by a juggernaut. Hey, speaking of being sucked up by a juggernaut, uh, <laughs> so we all know that uh, Amazon uh, owns Twitch now, and they've... I, I, I honestly was – when they first announced they were grabbing Twitch, I honestly expect uh, them – Sorry to interrupt. You know what? Until that announcement that you're about to talk about, I had no idea. I didn't realize. Really? Yeah, I didn't know. It must – it happened what? How long ago? We know somebody that didn't actually watch podcasts before he joined. <laughs> <laughs> you guys we talked, talked about, about this. Oh, oh, Anyways – um yeah so amazon owns twitch so for those of you who don't know um yeah it, it was a very out of left field i forget, I forget who the other people were, were vying for twitch but it was like out of nowhere boop amazon's like you're offering how much <laughs> here you go <laughs> we'll easily buy this and i wasn't sure what they're gonna do with it um i kind of expected i'm honestly just kind of let twitch just run amok on its own but amazon is actually kind of i don't know if it's doubling down now or tripling down now but they're actually going to have a Twitch Prime, which is a, the newest enhancement in Amazon's popular Prime subscription. What does Twitch Prime give you? So, first if, of all, for if you're already sorry, sorry to interrupt. If you're mm-hmm. already a Prime Amazon Prime owner, you're basically automatically getting the Twitch Prime as well. So yes, and so here's here, here's the, here's the first trick is, um, I am actually a Prime member, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll see. That gets me. <laughs> but the uh, prime membership for for um, Amazon is nine nine dollars a year, or like ten ninety nine a month. Um, I I got it back in the day because back when I built my PC and my wife's PC, um, I went ahead and got the prime membership because it was cheaper than paying the shipping for every single freaking piece. Right. Like that okay, yeah, whatever. And I just never got around to <clears throat> canceling it. Then I ended up getting a, a an Amazon Fire tablet, which I don't recommend. By the way, I'll do a review on that someday. Um, and other other you know free movies and other things like that. Um, with the Twitch 
add-in, so to speak. You're going to get free game loot every month, uh, discounts on new release box games, links, uh, linking your Amazon and Twitch accounts for ad-free viewing experience, and exclusive uh, emotes and chat bubbles. Woohoo! Yay! <laughs> Uh, free, <laughs> and one free channel subscription for 30 days. It's interesting. Really? In fact, I, well, I went to the Twitch uh, website and the Twitch website right at the top says, you know, try for 30 days. So you could, you could try this for 30 days for free. Yeah. If you go to the Amazon one right at the top, it says the same thing, try for 30 days. So I find it like kind of confusing because i'm looking at it going well wait, hang on a second is is amazon prime giving you twitch prime or is twitch prime giving you amazon prime? <laughs> now <laughs> you know <laughs> it's all one the same i i love amazon a lot for shopping um i love amazon prime because all the benefits <laughs> i get but the but amazon is is very avidly trying to create a very confined environment within amazon um Again, I'm not gonna go down a rat hole, but like give you an example. The the Amazon Fire tablet I have is so locked down, even though it's an Android tablet, I can't even get like the YouTube app on it. Mm. I mean it literally it, it's that I have to go through like the YouTube website to to do anything. It is just Okay. It's not friendly. I'm Google centric, so really it really hits me hard. But anyways, yeah, it, it's great to create that environment and it'll be neat to have extra features. I don't personally use Twitch so much. I really don't like Twitch. I'm sorry. <laughs> I I'd rather go with Beam. It's a better mm. experience. Which you know, I've the been, Beam is owned by Microsoft, right? Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, I just, uh, make sure. Okay, <laughs> recently, and uh, I've actually thought of because I've I've streamed on Twitch, but I've actually thought of switching over to Beam just because when I, I there's a certain love the Beam. interface, love the lack of of delay comparatively. Yeah, it's incredible. Like I'm talking to someone I'm watching, I literally type it and. Three seconds later, that person's answering me. Yep. It's unbelievable. Oh, it's great. It's absolutely yeah. great. So, yeah. So, yeah. like I said, if you guys are Prime members, kudos. Uh, go ahead and link your accounts, and you've got some extra bonuses and features, which is which is actually really nice. Um, and, likewise, if you're curious about it, yeah, yeah, you can try it for three, free for 30 days. But just remind you, it's like any other free trial thing. It's going to be a free and don't forget to cancel yeah the <laughs> so just it apply to that in, right yeah exactly <laughs> you know right, what isn't so free what sorry i didn't hear you there you, you know you know what isn't free but what isn't free something cheap er <laughs> something cheap er <laughs> um well <clears throat> as a news follow-up um this one is almost too good to be true uh a 4k vr headset that supports steam vr for 300 bucks, they actually have two models. The $300 model is just the headset. $350 model comes with earphones. Ooh. Uh, a Chinese company, uh, P Pimax? Uh, Pimax? That's it. Uh, it, it is it's selling, Chinese made. Yeah, is selling what it's labeled as the first 4K VR headset. Um, resolution is 3840 by 2160 compared to Oculus and Vibe's 2160 by 1200. Uh -huh. So if you, for you tech heads out there, that's like, bing, really? Um, the, the, the this, article... this is this is like basically sticking a retina level screen up to your face. Take yeah. two iPhones and go like this. <laughs> so the 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 person who actually got a tr a chance to try it in the article that I was going through uh, indicated that overall the the on the current models you get like the screen door effect. On this one, it's much, much less, almost non-existent, which is, oh, I'm like, oh, I want that. But um, the only thing is, is it's, it's how good could it be? But maybe it is really good. Uh, frame rates I, down to 60 from 90. So that's another thing. And that's a big thing. If the frame rates down, thing. that's a huge thing. You're, you're basically spending 300 bucks on a lower quality headset. Yes, they say, I guess... They use different lenses to give you the 4K and different displays in behind each lens mm -hmm. to give you the 4K. But if you're going to get uh, all that uh, information being bombarded into your eyes at a lower frame rate, people keep saying that you want to stay above that magical number, which is 90 FPS. Otherwise, you're going to feel sick. Yeah, that's that that's going to be a big deal for a lot of people. And uh, Remember, I don't know, man. I mean... 4K is great. Here's the thing. 
Yeah, you know, playing playing with the vibe. When you yeah. first put it on and you get past the initial whoa, yeah, you notice the screen door effect, yeah. but then you get drawn into the games and it's forgotten. Yeah, exactly. And I'm I'm especially with, with all of the big to do's about feeling motion sick and then still trying to work that out. We talked we talked I don't know if it was last week or week before about that, but having things like digital proboscises or <laughs> other things to try to help out with that. Uh, the last thing you need is to have something else reintroduced, basically, that can cause sickness after they just kind of figured out how to get past it. It's like, hey, yeah. look, low frame rates cause issues. Let's raise the frame rate, and then I'm going to drop back down. That said, let, let's let's talk about the, the big thing here. Yeah. It's a 4K resolution, and it's cheaper than the current HTC. Mm-hmm. How, how are they pulling this off? Well, okay. So the HTC Vive, uh, as you know, we I know we have discussed this, mm-hmm. has the sensors built into the headset, sensors built into the controllers, plus you have lighthouses that floods the room with ultra uh, infrared light, not ultraviolet. Uh, and, and that's how it positions you. Mm-hmm. This headset doesn't have any of that. So essentially when you go on to Steam and start playing with it, you're expected to use either a pre-programmed controller or a keyboard and mouse, and it uses gyroscopes built into the headset to keep track of where you're looking. Ooh. So so maybe that's one of the reasons why the cost is that much lower because it's it's relying on a, on a completely different technology to know where your head is oriented to oh, see what oh, you are. In. Okay, uh, no. No, <laughs> no, no. This is not a great alternative that can run Steam VR. This is a glorified Samsung yes. VR gear. There you go. Let's look at let, 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 let's let's just relabel this now for what it is. This is not something that's an alternative to grabbing the Vive. This is if you like Google Cardboard, try this out. It's, I'm, it's I'm just like gonna say it right Google now. Google Cardboard on steroids. <laughs> So, so I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read a, a couple of key lines that the the person who did the article says. The picture is sharper and clearer than either of the major headsets. There is no screen door effect to speak of, and the text is more legible. If big if you can coax its pupil distance adjustment feature in the software into working properly. Oh. So on the Vive, there's a little dial just under the headset that you can adjust the interpupillary distance or your IPD um, to get the lenses. <laughs> what? <Your> IPD. <laughs> IPD to get the uh, lenses to line up right with your pupils so that you have the best viewing experience. Um, I believe the Oculus has something similar. I can't remember. I think it's like a little roll wheel that you move and it does the same thing. Okay. Uh, this here looks like it's handling it through software. So that's another thing. And and he's saying Why? that it's really troublesome to try and get it right. So, okay. I, you know, I, I we could talk about this another time in, in more depth, <laughs> but okay. If you say so, I, yeah, I don't so... understand how you take a mechanical process of physically moving the lenses to adjust, to give you that best angle <laughs> and do this I, I, in yeah. software. I don't, I, I don't I, get it either. So I have a question. Spending the three hundred or three hundred and fifty dollars on this headset, would you be, oh my god, I've got an amazing deal and I can play VR, or would you be like, I just wasted three hundred bucks? Well, here's 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 the other thing. Uh, I didn't read the article. Did they say anything about if it needs all the same prowess or more prowess because it's four K? To run it, you know what? I didn't see any mention of that. That worries me. I didn't see any mention of that. I'm looking through it right now. We, we, we there have been news articles after news articles about the Vive and the Oculus needing power hungry gaming systems and top end video cards. Yeah. To run them, and now there's this just boop. Here's a 4K monitor for each eye. Now, okay, that's the thing. Is it a 4K monitor total? Uh, it's, or is it, it... Well, the Oculus Rift, I think, is... Uh, sorry, the Vive is 2160 by 1200. I think that is total. So I would assume that the resolution 3840 by 2160 is total. 
for so this that, device. That's not really 4K per eye. Right. But it's, 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 it's not it's really. The point is, it's a boost up in, in resolution. Yeah. Something has to push that to it. I noticed that I don't see like the plugs on top of the headset to plug in to it. Uh, so, yeah, I don't even know what kind of connection method. Oh, USB 3.0, although 2.0 is supported. There you go. HDMI. So it's like two cables. Okay. Well, that, that's I, you know be. what? I, I'm I'm fine with it. Let it happen because this will be a bit of competition for the big guys. So they're going to be pushed more to, to release better quality uh, hardware at a cheaper price than what they sold their first generation. Fair enough. Well, it, 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 we, we've talked about this before. It will get cheaper. It will get cheaper yeah. because, you know, next generation is going to get cheaper. But I, I just I, – I worry that if this thing gets spun as an alternative to Vive as opposed to alternative to, to you know, Samsung Gear kind of a thing. Yeah. And, act, you know, when, when, when basically when, when you when you go into dealership and they tout how this <clears> thing it can fucking race Ferraris and you find out it's better suited to be a minivan. <laughs> Just saying, you know, yeah. that's that, that that's gonna leave a sour taste in somebody's mouth. Yeah. And I, I, I personally really like VR a lot and I I'm a, I will admittedly say I'm a little bit protective of it, just in the sense that I, I really want to correct people when they get the wrong information about it. Mm -hmm. So that they keep an open mind because I want VR to be adopted. I want, I want, I want this time to be the time that VR actually makes it. <laughs> Not like you know, the Nintendo's VR uh, Boy. <laughs> what was it called? That wasn't called VR Boy. No, it was um. Not it, it was called as hell. <laughs> Vir virtual Boy. Virtual Boy. boy. <laughs> yeah, virtual. Anyways, right. um. So another news uh, uh, follow of us. I the news. Well, I guess the news fall. Yeah, it's just kind of news fall upon. Um, so we talked about yes. <laughs> No Man's Sky to no end. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look! It's a new segment. It's No Man's Sky time. <laughs> <laughs> so No Man's Sky uh, patches fix tons of bugs and help recover corrupt saves. So we talked about that before, uh, and basically they're they're going to be going through and doing uh, some patch updates and. It it really is just that, yeah. You know, just to kind of let you guys know, they they acknowledge it. They're fixing it. Um, apparently, you know, in between getting investigated for false advertisement, which is another news bite that came up just yeah. recently, it's like, yeah, they're being they're being adver they're basically being investigated for false advertisement because they showed ships flying in formation in the space, and that didn't really happen, and a few other things like that. It's like. Dear God, they they had to be there at some point. They probably cut them out or something because of deadlines or whatever. Okay, well, yeah. As much as I hate to, to to run away from this this news bite here, I really yeah. have to touch this other one because it is mind-numbingly stupid. There, there is. I believe this is actually a Canadian Canadians this time. They're they're, they're pulling this, but okay. basically, they're they're saying that there's false advertisement that there are features and elements of the game that weren't. And I'm telling you, honestly, it's stupid crap like, hey, you don't see a giant ship flying by in formation or if you don't. Oh, my dear God. You want false advertisement, guys? Go back to the 80s and look at the pictures of games on the Atari cartridges compared to what the actual games look like. Oh, okay? Yes. You want false advertisement? There you go. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I, I'm sorry, but it's just it's one of those things of false advertisement like, hey, buy this game. You'll have multiplayer. And then you buy this game, and there's no multiplayer. And there's no multiplayer. Which, oh, yeah. wait. That is no Man's Sky. <laughs> uh, I was told I could meet people. <laughs> you can. You can watch mysterious nothings open doors in front of you. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, the, the patches that they released this time around, I got to mention this. Uh, one of them is one of the bugs that I had a problem with, and that was you get stranded in your uh, in your star system. Yes. Uh, so for those who ordered on Steam, for those who pre-ordered the game, they got the new ship or the the higher grade ship. If you, you started basically the paid game, extra to bypass the tutorial. Yeah. So yeah, exactly, exactly. And and if you paid that, or if you got that that ship, and you immediately redeemed it in the uh -huh. game before you got the recipe for making a hyperdrive or the recipe for fueling the hyperdrive, you were stuck in that star system because the game would go, oh, he's got a hyperdrive. He doesn't need the quest for it. Forget about it. 
So to make this very clear, so now for all the people who pre-ordered to bypass this, who ended up figuring out that it was screwed up and have already gone back through and done it to yeah. get bypass this, I they've now that. fixed it so they can bypass this. Yep. But when did the game come out? <laughs> I know it's it's insane. The game came out and now the fix comes out. It's been like two months. Hasn't it? Two months? Hey, if you just happen to take two months to get around to play this game and you pre-ordered it, good news for you. <laughs> you can fix the bug that broke your game. Wow. Oh, That's a whole Man. lot of derp going I, on. <laughs> when, when it happened to me, I basically uh, I basically had to nuke your save file. Game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you had to do it in a specific way. Otherwise... Uh, the cloud features from Steam would just boop, pop it back and you'd be stuck again. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean... <laughs> so okay. you had, to, you had to... so you try to get rid of the save file and it keeps returning to when you don't want it. And then there's been like numerous news bites in the past of Steam nuking your save files without you wanting them nuked. So you had to go in and turn off the cloud feature and then delete them and then. Start... I love and... technology. It's it's good. Once you re-enabled the cloud feature, it asked, "Hey, would you like to uh, overwrite the files on your computer from cloud, or overwrite the files on cloud from your computer?" I was like, "Overwrite on the cloud, overwrite on the cloud." <laughs> but uh, I had some fun. I had some fun doing it. I made a video of it, put put it on my channel, and basically what I did is in my star system, I had two planets, three planets. And uh, I was doing this cool thing while I was playing the game. I was naming planets as to what they were in Latin. So I had a planet called Acid Planet, but I used Latin words that described Acid Planet. The other two I hadn't named yet. So I went on that night when I decided I was going to delete my save file and start over. And I called one broken in Latin and the other one game in Latin and saved <laughs> Nice. <laughs> so like now... It. There, it's on their server. Unless they clear or restart or relaunch the servers, anyone else who happens to go past that system will see two planets, one called Broken, one called Game. <laughs> so I had some fun with it. Nice. I like it. Hey, let's, let's take a quick break here. Um, again, we're, we're, we're going to be doing extended news tonight. So a quick break. I want to give a big shout out to Rourke88. Uh, you guys know him and love him. He's been on our uh, podcast a few times now. Um, he's the other crazy Canadian. He's the less polite one, just for the record. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, Rourke actually went out to uh, this 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 thing called uh, MineCon. I don't know. It's something to do with Mine mining. MineCon, Mine yeah. Mining and, hey. and getting together. Maybe they talk Locks. about dirt. Yeah. I don't know. Pick Anyways, no, seriously, guys, he, uh, Rourke is a big fan of, of Minecraft like many of us, but he actually avidly does it, unlike some of us right now. Uh, but he went out to Minecon. He's given his uh, he took uploaded a few videos uh, at Minecon talking about what's going on there. So if you want to get a little inside notes on that, you guys can go check out his channel here. He's also doing a lot of other games. Always, he's still doing uh, the Forest with uh, Not Quite Nerds and uh, I believe Trav. Uh, I can't remember who else. But anyways, so you can check all that out. Also, just another little uh, mini shout out. Rurok does have a second uh, channel called Rurok Talks. Uh, where he talks about different uh, topics of all sorts. Um, I'd say go check it out. See if it's uh, your cup of tea. It's basically kind of a talk show of sorts where he brings up different things. And you guys are more than welcome to submit uh, questions and input and whatnot that he can actually bring up and uh, talk about on his uh, his channel. So go ahead and check that out. All right. Yeah, he's pretty cool. On to um, sad news. I have some very sad news. Very and, sad news. Uh, before we even get into it, I want to say – if, if, if we could play taps right now <laughs> it's a uh, it's Canadian company isn't it yes it is yeah it is a Canadian company so sadly Blackberry will stop designing phones yes yes you heard it here Blackberry will stop yeah, designing the hardware phones. so it's it's the end of an era it's the end of a uh, tactile feed like tactile button keyboard era um it is the slowest death yeah, of a yeah, flipping it, company it, i have ever seen 
they were like for business, they were like on top, but then basically um, they, they and they remained committed to the keyboards instead of touch screens, even after touch screens basically became mainstream. And, and then by the time they introduced, I think it was their first one, the BlackBerry Z10, uh, which was a complete departure from their usual design where they now had a full touch screen. It was just simply too late. Here, here's Here's the thing. BlackBerry made one massively big mistake. They looked at a particular phone from Apple and went, that's cute, and it's going nowhere. Oops! Yeah. <laughs> and it has been a downhill slide. I mean, seriously, take, take a three-act play, shoot the main character in the first act, and have them just dying the rest of the friggin' play. That's what this is. You got a company that used to be hardware and software. They've dabbled in like an Android OS based BlackBerry. Yeah, they did. That's right. I totally forgot about that. And now they're basically saying we're no longer going to create the hardware. We're going to out. Effectively, they're outsourcing in a sense to a Chinese company. Yeah. To do hardware, which they'll put their software onto. But I mean, honestly, this is face facts. It, 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 these guys have been coughing up death nails for for a, while. a decade. <laughs> I mean, yeah, seriously, kind of sad. Actually, when they came out with that Z10, I was like, "Oh man, okay, good. I'd like to see them build back up again." But it just didn't happen. Mm -hmm. um, so, so basically, the company is now going to be focusing on software development, uh, development, including um, security and uh, secu more secure versions. I, I think of. Of their OS, or was it the Android OS? The well, Android I, OS. I, I'm not sure where the hell they're going to go because they had their own OS, and then they kind yeah. of diddle, diddle around with Android. I'm not, and I haven't paid attention recently to see where that's going to go, if it was ever going to go anywhere. But honestly, at this point, the best I could see them hoping for is being a very specific niche market, being like super hyper secure. And if yeah. they're going to do that, they're not going to take Android. Basically, somebody else's software so and try to gonna, adapt it. They're going to have to, yeah, either that or they're going to have to have their own complete OS from the ground up. They're going to have to. Cause the only way they can truly make it secure, well, to have a better shot at it than most, is to know their software inside out, backwards and forwards, and upside down. And to yeah. do that, you have to build it yourself. You just have to. Yeah, yeah. You know, a Android is proven <clears throat> to have its holes here and there. Mm -hmm. Hell, even yeah. iOS has. Mm. So, so at this point, this is a good example of how if you're if you don't want to, if you're not changing with the rest of them, you can easily get left out in the cold. Oh yeah, and yeah, they're, they're dead. That's it. That's it. Done. Dead. Over with. Done. Um, other news and interesting stuff in the media uh, bites realm. Disney's working on a live action reimagining of the Lion King. Um not I sure what to think of this. I, I think it's awesome. I, I watched the Lion King when I was like I don't even I remember did too. all the scenes. Yeah, I, did I don't too. even remember all the scenes. I I mean the Lion King is one of those I can sit down and watch it with my kids and be happy to watch it. It's fine. Yeah. But it wasn't one of Disney's best in my opinion. Okay, but it was very popular. I I might yeah. be just one of the weird outliers in that case. So, more power to him. I hope it works out well. Um, there's a, a YouTube channel called the the Super Carlin Brothers. They do um, a lot of really neat topics on Pixar and Disney, and they have a a video on this. So you can go check that out as well. I'll try to remember to put that in the show notes if I can remember to. Um, so keep that in mind, and. Uh, under the uh, well, that's random category. Oh, <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing because I keep thinking about this. Um, it's very weird, but it's pretty cool actually. Uh, there is a <laughs> okay. okay. There is a the headline setup. says it all. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The headline is "Wish Robots Would Kill Everyone You Know and Love." Call the robotic invasion hotline. So there's actually a hotline set up where you can call and speak to. It's it's not. I don't think it's live humans. It's like um, you know you speak to the voice and it 
sets up schedules and stuff. And you can literally schedule your annihilation, <laughs> your your robot hotline invasion lets you make goofy phone calls uh, to an automated, of course, phone line to talk to machines about scheduling your next invasion. Okay. Yo, like, had I, I had a chance to look at this before the show, honestly, yeah. Kirok, I would have set up a Hangouts call right I now oh, to call into this. And I so should have. Uh, it's okay. I, I wish I wish I had known better. If I knew this was live, I'd be down for this right now. It says, given that the rotary phone you need uh, to call this robot is one of kind, you can instead play for free on your browser. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> but, like... I I, I want to try it just out of curiosity to see what the heck this thing is. I I I may have to actually come back around to this. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've clicked okay. on the link. It's it's loading up Unity Web GL. Okay. I you know what I, I we'll save I put it, it in there because it was I, I don't want to run logs. So I'll I'll save it for later. But well, you saw my note. It's like, huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. And to think there's someone who would put that together. That's pretty I, 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 I tell you what. Somebody talks. Do us a favor. Do us a solid. Call <laughs> a hotline. Put out a hit for Ruark or somebody. And <laughs> let me know how it works out for you. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. All right, guys. I want to move over to the, uh, the calendar. We're actually going to get back into the calendar again. I apologize that we haven't done this in a while. But I do want to get back into it. So... For history, a little bit of history time for you. Ethernet is drafted. So September 30th, 1980, Digital and in, uh, Intel and Xerox released version 1.0 of the Ethernet specification known as the Blue Book. So this was the beginnings of Ethernet. Before this, the most common thing you saw for interlink between computers was like a token ring. Um, oh God, I can't remember the standards called. But this is like coax cables that would... Uh, T line into each computer in a big ring, um, okay. or you had what they call vampire uh, uh, vampire attachments. But literally, you had a cable going through. You'd actually would clamp on this piece. It would actually have two little spikes that would poke through the line and no make way. contact with the metal. Yeah. Hmm. So and, and those I, those I things were using, amazing. Uh, like phone lines. Well, phone lines for like dial, but we're talking about like a, in like an inner office network. Network. You know, basically, okay. it was basically a, it was BNC cables that would screw in a little T's of each computer. But like we had the end of the line, you had to put a terminator on so you wouldn't get signal bounce back. It was crazy. The, all okay. I'd say is this is so much better. Trust me on that. <laughs> it's come a long way too. It has. Yeah. Also in history. Yeah. Also in history today. Uh, today. Well, today, as we are recording this, not when you're watching, um, uh, Sony releases the first CD player. So the first commercial compact disc player, the Sony CP CDP-101, goes on sale in Japan. Look at that bad boy. I know. It's pretty amazing. And and this is – I remember – okay, hang on. I remember God, when – when uh, this technology came out, and I was in the garage, in the garage at my bet, um, one of my best friend's place, him and his friend, and we were standing there, and I'm like, dude, this is amazing. I'm gonna buy one. Not particularly this model, because it took a, a little bit of time to come to North America. Mm -hmm. But when it came, I was like, this is amazing. You could do this. You could, and they were like, expensive. They were so like, expensive. No, you don't oh want to. You don't know if this technology will take off. So. It was a big argument we had, like throughout the night. It was hilarious, and uh, and here we are now, where CDs are prevalent, but I think they're, <laughs> they're kind of dead. Are you kidding? Well, there you go. Like I, I have a, a computer upstairs that the optical drive is dead, and I've never used it, so I'm like, whatever. And I well, just CDs keep CDs the CDs People, I mean, there might be some people out there buying music on CD, but for the most part, uh, digital download really has been the prevalent replacement. And CDs aren't even good at storage. They're like they're like poultry yeah. for storage. Yeah, depending like people would buy uh, discs and burn stuff, which is fine. But uh, I think they say the average is twenty years for lifespan of a disc. But if you buy the cheap stuff, within five or six years, you'd start to see the foil flake off. 
<laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, in the other uh, calendar things, birthdays. We mm-hmm. actually have a couple of birthdays. Uh, first off, uh, on the second is actually Kirox Papa. <laughs> so ha- happy, uh, happy birthday, uh, Papa Kirok. <laughs> yeah, I, I, thank you. I will wish him for you. And also on the fifth, Kirok, happy birthday! Happy birthday My to birthday. you! Thank happy you. birthday oh, to you! <laughs> no, I'm not gonna smoke thing. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. So Get yeah, older. happy birthday to my friend. It's, it's, I, I keep getting people on when it's a birthday. It says she was on when it was her birthday, so I got to give her a hard time. So you're you're, you're going to be 23, 24? What? Uh, no, no, much <laughs> older. 28. Oh wow, 28. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I I I I think your whiskers betray you a little bit there, buddy. <laughs> really? And the hip pain too? Oh, <laughs> well, I got a whole bunch of pain. Of course, I have four kids, so this pain's right there. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All Anyways, right. guys, so, that brings it to a friend. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. All right. So uh, releases. Releases coming up. Uh, October in general seems to be a pretty busy month, but for mm-hmm. for this coming week, the 3rd to the 10th, uh, we have Mafia 3 coming out for PC, Xbox One, PS4. I've ordered my copy already. Have you? I have. A, I can't wait. I played Mafia 2. Great game. Can't Never played the play game. Three. No, Seems it's, it's fun. It's good. I like it because it's open world concepts, a lot like Grand Theft Auto, but the story in it was good. And plus, they were Italian, eh? Oh. Uh, so <laughs> 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 the other game, uh, October 7th, is uh, P- Paper Mario Color Splash for the Wii U. Which and I then... really hope to God they don't flag us again because. Oh. Just by mentioning it, or are you sure? I, I, God, the way Nintendo is, every time we okay. every time we play anything from Nintendo, video wise, we get flagged. I'm afraid looking at Nintendo, mentioning the words gets flagged. We should be changing the name instead of saying Nintendo, we say Nimblendo or something. <laughs> Nimblendo, anyways. Nimblendo. Anyways, so yeah, pop, yeah, Paper Mario. I know was a, was a, a a popular take on Mario. So I got Paper Mario Splash. Dusty said that was uh, seventh, right? 7th, yeah, October 7th, same day as Mafia 3. Yeah, you know what? Screw all that crap, because October 10th, yeah, 100-foot robot golf for the VR. Oh, oh yeah. Nice. <laughs> Which VR? Which, dude, PlayStation. I mean, <laughs> it's not the best thing in the world, but it is PlayStation style, so you got a PlayStation 4 and PlayStation VR. I, I, I'm so down for this. I just realized something. Huh? You can't wait to play because you like golf, right? Uh-huh. The golf game. I just realized that the game is out on the tenth, but the VR system doesn't come out till the thirteenth, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> well, I, I I know for a fact that uh, the session House Nexus is going to be getting the uh, the the PlayStation VR to yeah. play with, and just the idea of putting on a VR goggle headset and looking like you are a hundred foot tall robot. You know someone's going to want to go Godzilla on that. (laughs) And you know a lot of friends are going to get smacked upside the head because of it. (laughs) Going to have to play it seated or you might fall off the chair. All right, guys. Last last thing for you. And again, it's not one of those. I'm not going to play the video. I want you to go to the show notes and check it out. Overwatch gets his first porn parody. (laughs) Notice the title of the video in the video frame. I will leave it at that. <laughs> Again, show <clears throat> notes. You can find our show notes over at ballrockgaming.com. In this case, it's slash form slash 34. But head on over there. Go to the forum. Check out the Ball Rock at, uh, uh forums for the podcast. We, we will try to start getting the show notes back up there. I'm sorry I haven't got this done. I have been so far behind on it. It looks worse than it is right here, too, because we went to the new website and then came back. So... Mm. sorry um but yeah um head on over there you can give us input you can sign up to join us if you'd like to join us um give us feedback you can also advertise with us if you have interest in, in getting a shout out for a new series a channel some service let us know we'll see what we can do for you we'd love to put you on there so definitely check that out and hopefully things will go well <laughs> hey kirok yes how's life <clears throat> life's good on it's vacation. 
That's right. Birthday coming up. Yeah. So that means you're going to have like an explosion of content coming on your channel, right? Uh, yeah, I probably will. I'm going to do a lot more VR. I'm going to do uh, a lot more gaming. Uh, going to barbecue a lot too, but it's been raining the last couple of days. So hopefully that uh, clears up. Now, I, I, I got to know a couple things here, guys. First of all, um, VR has been a big thing on Kirok's channel as of late for some strange reason. <laughs> Something to do with, you know, paying an inordinate amount of money for a VR system. Uh, <laughs> I haven't had a chance to watch all of these, but the two <clears throat> I'm going to point out that I, I am going to put a tag as a must watch. First of all is Hot Dogs, Horseshoes, and Hand Grenades. It's an amazing, amazing game it's with really the accuracy awesome. and realism. And it really By far my you, favorite. It gives you a really good understanding of what VR can do. The other one that I haven't watched yet, and I'm going to sit down and do this soon here, is Hover Junkers. Oh, yeah. I, I saw a sample of that. I'm really looking forward. I want to see what that's like. Is it worth it? Should I be excited? Yeah. It's it's uh, it's well worth it. Uh, of all the VR games out there, it's a little more on the pricey side, but it's polished. When you look at that game, they took their time. They did the graphics right. And it's multiplayer. One of the few that's multiplayer. I was Ooh. virtually playing with a friend uh on a stage and we were shooting at like robots coming at us it was so much fun you know i i don't i don't have the ability to set up to actually record because it's <laughs> not my system but i tell you what let's let's make a point to try lamps some time here let me see if i can get my ass over to house nexus oh, okay. and get set up and see if we can actually link up on this i would yeah. love to play this with you yeah i would absolutely so love to do that it so is i so look good. forward to that also, you can see he's also got other content up here, guys, one of which happens to be, of course, Project Singularity, because yeah. they're all a bunch of good peoples. How is Project Singularity doing? We're doing well. Um, we recently passed our two years. Wow. As, a, as an organ. Yeah, but that was like recently as in like maybe three weeks ago, something like that. Um, <clears throat> uh, we're doing good. Um, there's nothing. Oh, one of them moved to Toronto, literally going to school 10 minutes away from where I live. So I can more easily stalk him. I mean, <laughs> hang out with him. Uh, I'm, of course. I'm going to invite him over and have him try out the VR. It's going to be fun. Can't awesome. Wait. Awesome. Awesome. And of course, guys, if you want to get a hold of uh, Kirok, you can always hit him up on almost everything on the side. If you look up Kirok Craft, you'll be able to find him, including his Twitter account. Yeah. You can also find him, of course, by chatting to him at his YouTube channel or even, God forbid, actually going to BRG's website and yelling there. He actually might hear that. Sometimes I doubt it, but nevertheless, uh, <laughs> I myself, again, my, my channel is, is, is taking a little siesta right now. Um, you, you'll notice I actually have kind of, well, you can't really tell now because it's actually dark outside, but the black behind me is not the outside. It's actually almost walls. It's tar paper. It's, okay. it's the under laminate that goes behind the walls, but there's, there's actually, there's actually a, a, a window back here and and since there's no door to this room because i have to go the other way my desk is in the way i have to actually climb out through the window to get out of here what I'm <laughs> <laughs> but it's coming along we're getting closer I, i've started to get the rafters up for the roof so that's kind of been taking a lot of my time up and of course doing the podcast here with uh with kirok um that that that's pretty much been my whole life um, again, guys, if, if you have an interest in things like this, if you do enjoy the podcast um, and you do enjoy the company of me and K Kirok, uh, please feel free to head on over to BallRockGaming.com and check out the rest of the Barrock crew. We do have a lot of fun. We do do a lot of events and other things um, and have a lot of, uh, of good times. Um, oh, uh, one other thing I just actually found out like at the beginning of this recording tonight is I'm next up for the Loot Crate unboxing uh, nice. for the BRG channel. So I'll be getting that. I don't know when, but we'll do an unboxing and posting up on the BRG website. But yeah, head on over to BRG's website. Check us out. Give us some love. Say hi. You can, of course, keep connected with us on all the content we're doing on our wonderful YouTube channel. And um, <clears throat> we've got the unboxings. We've got um, um, the podcast. We usually have a weekly rundown that's kind of been a while to go yell at dude hey dude caller you're slipping buddy where's my <laughs> weekly run i have no idea what's going on with half oh, our crew yes, yes. so now, uh, I gotta go, now i gotta go now i gotta go now i gotta go lay some beat down on people anyways guys of course goes go over to votable check us out on Vobal. Yeah. i'd love you to go over to Vobal, say hi to us you just go to vobal.com slash gaming 
post, say hi, keep connected. We do a lot of uh, posting there as well. And of course, as always, as Kirok said from the beginning, we do have a Patreon account. We'd love to get uh, uh, a donation from you in the monetary variety. It helps us out a lot. Again, all that money goes back into uh, our community to try to do stuff, fun stuff to put up for you guys to enjoy, like the unboxings, for example. Yep. Uh, but of course, as I said, if you don't have the money, I completely understand. I am I am broke as a joke myself. But uh, if you can, go over to Vulnerable and give us a little shout out. Go on to Twitter. Give us some love. Help spread the word about the podcast. We'd love to get this ramped up and moving. We've got a lot of big plans coming in the new year. And we'd love to have more people to talk at because it's always a lot more fun when there's a bigger community to talk to. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, guys. Kirok, as right. always, it's always a pleasure getting on with you. Pleasure to be on with you as well, bud. And, uh, yeah, well, hell, let's do this again next week. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you did so good the first time. Oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs>